Well, here we are at the West Side Nature Preserve at Western Connecticut State University's West Side Campus. It's a lovely spot. This is my absolute favorite place on, at the Nature Preserve. I've been bringing students here for a college class since 1997, I believe. And this is um, a, a lovely example of a stone wall which uh, New England is quite famous for them and, um, and so on. The largest and oldest trees that were left behind and not cut by the farmers were left as shade for the livestock. And we call those wolf trees, wolf like our new mastodon. <clears throat> well, I was, I've been here at Western since 1996. Um, that's a story too, but not for, not for this occasion. And uh, I have been doing public outreach probably since the first or second year I was here. In 2000, I'm an ecologist by training. I uh, did my graduate work at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, where I studied first stream ecosystems and later forest ecosystems. And so I was interested in such things. Last year I did 44 public talks on climate change in a variety, to a vi variety of groups, including um, to Stanford High School, uh, about half of the student body, and to the entire ninth grade class of Ridgefield High School, it is something that I'm passionate about because I have a grandson and I am one of those believers in the golden rule as the ethical foundation of human civilization. And what we need to do living on this small planet where, that we, we have is to apply the golden rule to people we have not met in countries we have never visited and it needs, to be, it needs to be extended through the generations and not yet born. If we do that as individuals and as a global civilization, then we have a chance. We've been to lots of places and um, people are people and we all just need to uh, understand what's ahead of us. And my gift to the local community is to educate whoever is interested in the latest on climate change. Later in the summer, I'll be starting an in-person series in the Danbury Library. And um, it's just one of those things. And people call me up and say, can you come talk to our group? And I say, sure. It, to me, the advantage of Western is I get to know the students. I, they, they'll often take, me, take more than one course for me. I get to know what they're interested in. I get to have a role in shaping their perspective on the world. The advantage to them is they get to take more than one course from professors that they find rapport with. So it is fulfilling to me it, it, to be able to teach interdisciplinary courses. It's thrilling or fulfilling to the students as well because they hear what is the effect of climate change on the development of human civilization? And so it is a mutually beneficial relationship to have a small school where you have approachable professors. Now, one more is that the Jane Goodall Center here at Western Connecticut State University, we have a, a 25 year relationship with Jane Goodall, the Jane Goodall, the woman who studies chimps. And she's been here a number of times, I've met her four or five times, and our institute, uh, named after her uh, for environmental education, and one of its activities is putting on the Jane Goodall Climate Talks in the spring. And it's a series of five talks where professors like me and interested students will get together and jointly present a public talk on some aspect of climate change related to the expertise of the professor. Do I believe that I leave people with hope when I give public talks and so on? I make every effort to do so because you don't want to leave people depressed because then they have no energy, okay? You need to leave them with the idea that there is some spark within them that can make a difference.